Well, the data is in, and it's time to see what Kathy Wood has been buying in her ARK Invest funds over the last month. But this time, instead of just reading through some numbers, I'd like to use this data to tell you an interesting story. Here's how our story begins. With this correction and with uh, some of the increased estimates uh, we, we are now using, we now see you know, a quadrupling over the next five years in our portfolios. That CNBC clip of Kathy Wood is from just last week, November 24th to be exact. On that day, ARK-K was trading at just over $105 per share. You know what that means, don't you? It means that if Kathy Wood is right and ARK-K's share price quadruples over the next five years, it would actually be worth $420.69. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. All kidding aside, that $420 price target obviously requires a lot of things to go right and not many things to go wrong, which is a pretty tall order. It means that ARK Invest's holdings will need to keep growing at an average compound annual growth rate of 32% for the next 20 quarters. Also, it's not enough for ARK Invest to be holding all the right companies, they also have to hold them in roughly the right order. So over those same 20 quarters, ARK Invest will need to keep up with even more technology platforms and the companies building on top of them to make sure they're still holding the biggest winners near the top of their funds. Over this past year, we saw ARK Invest drop stocks like Nvidia and Apple, both of which have seriously outperformed ARK-K, ARK Invest's flagship innovation fund. Also, all of that performance could be thrown out the window, depending on totally normal world events like the next US presidential and congressional elections, new regulatory crackdowns and potential delistings from China, or a raising of interest rates, which is literally causing her funds to tank as I record this right now. And that's not even getting into the possibility of a recession or just another wave of a pandemic that no one saw coming just two years ago. So comment below or tweet me at ticker symbol U. Given all of these potential risks over the next five weeks, let alone the next five years, do you think that one share of ARK-K could actually be worth for 2069? I'm excited to hear your thoughts. So what about me? Do I think that ARK-K could quadruple over the next five years? I absolutely do. Don't forget, even as of right now, ARK-K has much more than quadrupled over the last five years, and almost everything I just mentioned actually happened in that time frame as well. At its peak, ARK-K actually returned almost 700% from its start in 2016, and that peak was this year, in 2021, with all of those things priced into it. Okay, everybody knows that I'm super bullish on ARK Invest, and that past performance doesn't really say anything about future performance, so let's pump the brakes a bit. One of my guilty pleasures is reading bearish Seeking Alpha articles on my favorite stocks, Tesla, Palantir, ARK Invest's funds, and so on. I actually read these articles for more than just getting a good laugh. Sometimes there's a hot take in there that makes me question my convictions on these stocks. For real, that's actually pretty useful. The problem with all the bearish articles on ARK Invest specifically is they literally do not understand the basics of technology. It's important to understand just how bad this misunderstanding is on Seeking Alpha, on Twitter, and right here on YouTube. This is an article by The Value Portfolio, who's been contributing to Seeking Alpha since 2015, has written over 1,100 articles, and has almost 25,000 followers. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. The article starts in total agreement with Kathy Wood on innovation. New companies can be more agile and innovative than legacy ones. We should invest in the companies that are positively transforming our daily lives, and this strategy is both volatile and genuinely risky. This is literally a page out of the ARK Invest playbook. Then, in the span of a single page, the author says this. Tesla, the portfolio's largest holding in ARK-K at over a 10% share, is a classic example that we've discussed before. The company is entering a new and exciting market, electric vehicles, that does have a tangible growing benefit to consumers and customer support. What Tesla doesn't have is any unique advantages over competitors such as Lucid Air, Rivian, Ford, and so on. As they ramp up production, we expect Tesla has peaked, especially with its current valuation. Here's how this article ends. While we don't feel it's effective to deep dive into the decisions and irrationality between each investment in ARK-K's portfolio, which is basically just the author's way of admitting he didn't do any research before writing this article, 
we'll do a case study with our thesis and Tesla. Tesla is now receiving significant additional competition. Lucid Air and Rivian are wealthy pure play competitors. Traditional manufacturers are rapidly ramping up manufacturing and models. Tesla's competitive edge is eroding, meaning that we expect its stock price to underperform even as EVs grow, a big risk given its weighting in our case portfolio. That's it. That's the whole case study. And here's how the article concludes. I'm just assuming this is a typo and they mean ARC here, not ARC-K. We believe ARC fundamentally doesn't understand investing in innovation and its portfolio will underperform even with the success of the industries underlying it. Look, let me be real here for a minute. I actually end up sifting through a lot of hot garbage like this to find real, sound arguments against ARK Invest, even as their funds continue to trend downwards. It actually takes me a lot more time than I care to admit, and is one of the reasons that I don't publish videos daily. And again, this author has thousands of followers. I honestly don't know how Seeking Alpha can allow and promote money-losing ideas like just sell everything because ARK Invest holds it. But I'm glad they do, because inside this article is actually a gem worth talking about which is ARK Invest's perceived concentration risk. So what is that? That's this idea that ARK Invest is putting all of their eggs in one basket, high growth, volatile tech stocks focused on only doing one thing. As the article states, the ARK Innovation ETF has 50% of its portfolio concentrated within its top nine investments. Many of these investments are uniquely focused on a single industry or customer market like Zoom, Coinbase, and Unity. That means there's a non-negligible chance that one or more of these companies fails to develop long-term traction. In that case, any of these top nine investments, all of which are greater than 4% of the portfolio, could go bankrupt, significantly dragging down ARK's results. Already, year to date, the valuation downturn in some of these companies, such as Zoom, has placed strong negative pressure on the company's results. ARK is minimally diversified, which presents a major risk. In the much more risky innovation business, lack of diversification can easily spell the end. So these are the two sides to our story. On one side, we have Kathy Wood, who has a five-year price target on ARK-K of 420.69. Nice. On the other side, we have ARK-K's clear lack of diversification, which could easily spell the end for ARK Invest. Does one side of this story make more sense to you than the other? Seriously, if you're concerned with ARK Invest's lack of diversification, let me know in the comments below. That's a totally valid concern. And as always, we can turn to the data to see if it's true. Here's a table of ARK Invest's top holdings when you combine Kathy Wood's six actively managed funds. Each row is one stock, the rows are ordered by the size of ARK Invest's position in that stock, and each position is colored by how much it grew or shrank relative to ARK Invest's combined funds since the start of the month. Positions can grow or shrink for a few reasons. Kathy Wood buys or sells shares of the company, which is the first column. Those shares change in price, which is the third column or any combination of the two. For example, you can see that ARK Invest's positions in Tesla and Teladoc are both around 20% smaller than they were at the start of the month. But Tesla's position is smaller because Kathy Wood sold 20% of her shares near the top, while Teladoc's position is smaller because its price went down and Kathy Wood didn't buy the dip enough to make up for that. Great. Now let's talk about Zoom, since that Seeking Alpha article specifically calls out that company. Zoom's share price fell over 20% since the start of the month, and Kathy Wood has added over 30% to her share count as a result. So she bought the dip. But if the author would have looked at her top 11 positions instead of her top 9, he would have also seen that she bought a ton of Twilio. Twilio is a cloud communications company that allows software developers to build all sorts of web-based communications tools like automatically sending and receiving texts, phone calls, Facebook and Instagram messages, emails, and so on. So it also covers some of the communications part of a business's tech stack. All this author had to do was look two companies further down the list to see that Kathy Wood actually increased her position in Twilio by more than she increased her position in Zoom. Talk about lazy financial journalism. As with all good stories though, this one comes with a twist. This article actually says something that I totally agree with. In any new industry, companies often come in waves, where the previous wave is removed by the success of the upcoming wave. That means that even if these sectors become significant long-term market sectors, the companies to gain the largest valuation and make the most profit in them might not exist yet. 
So why is Kathy Wood so confident that Zoom is the winner when it comes to communications platforms and not some younger and more agile company? Well, guess what? She literally tells us. So here you go. You have been loading up on Zoom as the stock has continued to fall. Why? Yes, uh, we believe that for the first time in decades uh, that the communication system of the world is going to be replaced. Innovation solves problems. Uh, many people think of Zoom simply as a video uh, chat uh, service. It is not. It is becoming a unified communication system. And uh, the, the old ones, I guess the old ones, Cisco and Polycom uh, would be among them, they're going to be ripped out because in the new hybrid world, uh, we can't have the latency uh, problems and the performance problems that they have. I, I know that I feel when I'm going to be on a, a call, a video call, I'm relieved that it's Zoom because I know it's going to work. Uh, many others don't. So the communications uh, part of the tech stack is the largest. Right. It's $1.5 trillion globally. Uh, Zoom is a $4 billion revenue company right now. Uh, so we think it has miles to go. And one other thing, last year, Zoom sales uh, in this court, this past quarter uh, were up about 360% as we were in the middle of the coronavirus crisis. Uh, this year, expectations for the fourth quarter uh, against the toughest compare last year are up 19 percent, their own guidance. And that is a seasonally weak quarter for them. So uh, I, I am fairly amazed that they are showing increases at all on top of that 360 uh, percent burst. So uh, I don't know what other analysts are thinking, but I think this is one of the most uh, important communications companies to come along in many decades. So going back to that Seeking Alpha article, the big mistake is thinking that ARK Invest's picks are uniquely focused on a single industry or customer market. These are technology platforms that all industries and all market segments can leverage. Remember this clip that I used to play in literally every episode I made? The five innovation platforms upon which we base all of our research are DNA sequencing, robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and blockchain technology. These platforms cut across sectors. They cut across geographies. They cut across markets. Well, in the case of Zoom, we're talking about a unified communications platform. Shout out to Dave Lee from Dave Lee on Investing for pointing out this awesome article in Zoom's blog. Zoom has been busy developing innovations for a core unified communication solution to provide customers with everything they need to support digital and hybrid work environments, including secure phone and video voicemail, an enhanced whiteboard solution that works with Oculus VR headsets, live translation and transcription features, more realistic virtual meeting spaces, interactive maps, enhanced chat features, and much more. This isn't a company catering to a single customer market. It's a communication and collaboration platform designed for the entire market, businesses and individuals alike. Zoom is not the legacy platform, that's Cisco Systems. And again, even if you don't agree with that idea, ARK Invest increased their position in Twilio by more than they did in Zoom, further diversifying their top holdings in the communication space. The fact that Zoom stock is down 20% for the month and 50% down for the year isn't a reflection of Zoom. It's a reflection of the market. Just look at the data. Zoom has been growing year over year and quarter over quarter. Almost all of ARK Invest's top holdings are down by 10%, 20%, or even more, regardless of the industries they serve. Genomics, fintech, entertainment, communications, it doesn't matter. Do you really think that all of these companies are 20% worse this month than they were 30 days ago? Or do you think that this is a market-wide adjustment based on news surrounding inflation, tapering, and the raising of interest rates? Are you selling wonderful companies at bargain basement prices? Or do you know what you're holding? Between the performance of your funds and just the indexes, the delta is spreading uh, on the negative side. And I'm curious how that affects your thinking uh, about the markets and, what, and what's going to happen to your funds over time. But does it change your abilities to buy and sell certain things? And, and do you worry or are you concerned that there are going to be investors who effectively are going to sell 
in these moments? My worry is more for them than for us. I get uh, very unsettled when I see uh, people selling at what I know are bargain basement prices. Uh, just to give you a sense of that, we do five-year uh, uh, forecasts for uh, EV to EBITDA, and we assume massive multiple compression from this moment on to five years out. So all of our stocks, or most of them, will have FANG-like multiples, which is a mature growth company. With that assumption, at our peak in mid-February, uh, we were able to say that our portfolios would deliver, if our estimates are correct, uh, a 15% compound annual rate of return over the next five years. So double over the next five years. With this correction and with uh, some of the increased estimates uh, we, we are now using uh, based on fundamentals, not at all on valuation, uh, we, we now see you know, a quadrupling over the next five years in our portfolios. The five-year road for RK to hit that magic price of 420.69 is going to be filled with big bumps, especially with everything going on with inflation right now. Jerome Powell just announced that he expects policymakers to discuss finishing tapering a few months sooner than expected, which opens the door to raising interest rates. That's exactly the kind of thing that ARK Invest portfolios are actually sensitive to. So if you want to learn more about what you should watch out for, the indicators you can follow, and how you can protect your own downside, I just made an episode about it. I'll link that episode in the end card for you and in the description below as well. Hopefully, this episode helped you understand what ARK Invest has been buying this month, their fund performance expectations over the next five years, and what a bad bear thesis against them looks like. Put together with my previous episode, you should have everything you need to be as safe or as risky as you feel comfortable while still investing in the future, your future and mine. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.